thanks for tuning in to this presentation of The Path Forward. This is Daniel Workman. I am joined by Chris Kessel of West Virginia Soccer Association. Chris, how are you doing? I'm doing great this evening. Thanks for having me. So we are going to talk through and look at the path forward for U.S. soccer. Another thing that, that would help with this is, is looking at a youth pyramid, for example. So instead of thinking this as a national level, we would look at this more as like a regional level. So, you know, your, your top youth league would, would really fall more into the level of, say, tier five in, a, in a, an adult league where you've got 32 regions and, and things would be split up that in that kind of way to try to reduce travel costs and, you know, reduce expenses, operating expenses for clubs, which means that we can get more kids playing because not only are the adult registrations down, but youth registrations are down and, you know, cr creating pathways for clubs to convert from youth clubs into generational clubs for adult clubs to convert into generational clubs and then, and then doing some common sense approaches to the uh, adult pyramid as well as the youth pyramid would in my in my estimation rapidly improve the registration uh, conundrum and problem that u.s soccer is currently experiencing i i i, I totally unequivocally agree with you like they they just this uh reigning in of the extreme travel that the you know elite players in this country do would do wonders for the competition out there and this also helps you know, when it comes to it, it's let me the selling of dreams is what I like to call it, because when it becomes important for the clubs to actually develop the best players, it will be important to the clubs to make sure the best players are playing as opposed to selling dreams to parents that playing in this national league is what's important because that's what pays the bills. Right. If that makes sense. I mean, the way that I feel that makes sense and that will allow parents and players to find the realistic level because their realistic level for their child because the clubs will no longer have an incentive to oversell players that this national, you know, travel schedule is what's important because all of us in this region are going to be playing in this regional league. So we can't sell national travel, you know, because we're in the national league, we're better. No, we're all playing in the regional league because we're all the best players and we're going to find our level in this regional league, you know, instead of flying over thousands of other good players that are right here, it's going to allow us to find our level at this point. Well, and it will stop the selling of dreams to parent parents. Agreed. And, and, you know, one of the things that I think is often missed when we look at youth soccer in America and travel is, is the amount of wasted time that could have been development time for players. Yeah. They are in cars where they are in team buses or on airplanes traveling just to go play a match. They'll travel, you know, five hours to play a 90 minute match and then drive five hours to get back home. And in, in all of that, that 10 hours, they, they would have been much better off as a player if they spent that 10 hours out on a soccer field rather or than driving, you know, forced better over. People. Better off as people. They would be able to have other interests. When we hear about burnout, 
It's because soccer is their life because they're spending so much time traveling to and from it oftentimes. That 10 hours would have allowed them to have a hobby or to do better in school or to play another sport with their friends. Like burnout is a multifaceted thing and reducing the travel will reduce the burnout. Certainly. And, you know, I, as, as, as I kind of look through, you know, the, the landscape of American soccer, one of the things that really frustrates me is the fact that we get so obsessed with what we've been doing. And instead of looking at where we should be and then working on how to get there, we go, well, here's where we are. And, and, and we just get overwhelmed by the current reality. This thing is just kind of like cancer is just grown out of control. And, you know, we could sit here until we are blue in the face and, and point fingers and look at us soccer and their poor management and leadership in this, in this, you know, scenario. Um, but, but the truth is, is the way forward, the path forward for us soccer is connectivity. And so the way that I see this is what is necessary for the growth of American soccer, what is necessary for the growth of individual clubs in American soccer is being connected to, related to other clubs in a, in a network of leagues, in a pyramid style league system and association like the United States Association of Soccer Leagues, which then provides this common uh, platform for overcoming disagreements because there, there are always going to be ideas. There, there's going to be opinions. Everybody's got them. And, and so one of the keys to overcoming any objections or any uh, uh, situations where there are conflicts is, is to come into a, in a, an association like the USASL where you are already saying, we agree to these basic standards as a league. And, you know, when, when we say we're going to play fall to spring, we're going to play a minimum number of fixtures and, you know, we are going to be a league that is owned by equally by its member clubs. And, you know, and you have these basic rules. It doesn't say, it doesn't say that the USASL, it's not the idea that there needs to be micromanagement of a regional league taking place in West Virginia. What, it, what it's saying is, is that, look, in order for us to be connected, we've got to have some shared principles and some shared values. And, and this is the thing for me as we kind of bring this to a close where, where I want to, to kind of land. And, and that is in order for us to build a, a better mousetrap for American soccer, we have to understand that that better mousetrap must include connectivity. It must be about relating to one another as clubs as leagues and 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 to do that the glue is common shared values and principles it's why the the premier league and the english football league uh, in, in england and the bundesliga in germany and all of these leagues are, are are in operation and doing great things on and off the field because they they have a basic core uh, set of shared values and you know are they perfect everywhere no but but it's the glue that keeps this thing together and right now we have no glue that keeps anything together in american soccer if we don't like it we just run off and do our own thing and we try to fight back and fight and do and this and that rather than going you know what on a, on a on a very minimal level we are going to agree on this this is going to kind of be our soccer bill of rights, right? And, and so we are going to say, this is our shared value. This is where we're going to put our stake in, stake in the ground. 
and you know we're gonna we're gonna do this and by doing this that means that I can if I'm the Gulf Coast Premier League I can uh, uh, um, connect to other leagues on on a tier five level um, I can also establish connections to an NPSL at a tier four level above me I can and and if I'm NPSL I can connect to a tier three or tier two so on and so forth. And, and when you do that, you are unlocking so many opportunities for players, for coaches, for clubs, for these leagues, um, commercially, um, as, as well as uh, achieving dreams in, in what for many has been the impossible 